In this video, we're going to look at making dextrose based rocket fuel. And dextrose is a sugar, most everyone knows that, but this sugar comes as a hydrate. So, in the molecule of dextrose is water, and that needs to be dried before we can use it. Speaking of water, you might. Yeah, it started raining pretty hard on my roof here. Hope that doesn't interfere. Our materials consist of potassium nitrate, KNO3, 28 grams, which is 59% of the mix. Dextrose, once it's been dried, 15 grams or 32% of the mix. Sulfur, 2 grams or 4% of the mix. And iron oxide, aka rust, 2.5 grams or 5% of the mix. There are methods. There's going to be two of them. The first one is just to mix the above uh, powders here and to pack them tightly into the housing of the rocket engine and light it with, a, of course, a nozzle and see what happens. The second one will be to mix the above again and melt it and then pour this into a rocket engine housing, make a, a nozzle and light it. And uh, we'll start small and kind of test it out. And I hope to end bigger. So let's get to it and make our dextrose space rocket fuel. To start making the dextrose space rocket engines, another sugar rocket engine, we have to dehydrate the dextrose because this is dextrose hydrate. And it's naturally how it's found. I would recommend putting about a centimeter of it on a cookie sheet and turning the heat up to 175 degrees for like an hour to an hour and a half. The dextrose ready to go in the oven. This is the completely cooked dextrose. If you leave it out for long enough, it will start to absorb moisture again from the air. So I'm going to scoop it and put it into that glass jar and seal it. Here's a mess of firework tubes that all have been burned out. They've been used, so I'm going to use them for rocket engine housings. And I pulled one off here, and of course you can't have two holes in it. That's where the fuse went through to continue the sequence as it burned. And um, I'm going to fill those holes up so uh, they're solid. So I'm going to start fixing those two holes here by using uh, sodium bicarb or baking soda. And I'm just going to dump it pretty liberally here over that hole like that. And then I'm going to do another one here. You want to get as much in there as you can. It's not critical that uh, it's packed completely at first, especially if it's a bigger hole. So we'll leave those two just like that for now. Some of you have seen this already, but baking soda and super glue works really well. Make a solid uh, substance there. So I'm going to clean this up, put in some more baking soda, and fill it up again. I put some more baking soda in and uh, super glue. Those holes are no longer there, and you can see, you know, that stuff's rock hard, and it will hold to this paper very well. So that's a simple fix for a lot of different things. This is a simple first test of the dextrose based rocket engines. Dextrose is 32%, potassium nitrate 59%, sulfur 4%, and the iron oxide 5%, just like I was talking about. A little hard to light here. This rocket engine was just packed powder. The next one I'll be melting, of course, to try it. And that loud noise was me backing up and knocking over this table right here. This is the same mix I used in the packed powder little rocket engine that barely got off the ground that was in one of these containers here. And you can see what I used. So what I'm going to do is put it in here, heat it, melt it, put it in there, and we'll try this with a uh, melted rocket engine using dextrose again. Almost there. Actually, yeah, it's there. This is never fun, ever. It's completely hardened here, and you can see some of the rocket fuel hardened on the inside here where the nozzle is going to be, so I'm going to have to scrape that off there, put in a nozzle, and then we'll launch it. I clean the inside of that out and I put in the epoxy kitty litter mix that I usually do. It's hardened and I drilled a hole all the way through almost 764 of an inch. That's what I use to drill that hole, put a fuse in there and of course the stick. Launching the Dextro Space rocket engine. Hmm. 
Nice. I had a little extra fuel from the Dextrose based rocket engine, so. really well moving on here the original recipe is right here for a dextrose rocket engine that's partly tweaked by myself there but that's what i was using and when we did the test uh, engines i cut this recipe in half but to make the larger engine i'm going to double it the original recipe so potassium nitrate 56 grams dextrose 30 grams sulfur 4 grams and iron oxide Five grams. The diagram here represents uh, the rocket engine when I'm done, what it should be like. And interestingly, I'm going to use this right here, which came from this originally, but we filled those holes up. And it uh, turns out that this has the exact dimensions of a D engine of an Estes or higher. It has got a one inch outside diameter and a three quarters inch inside diameter. And there's approximately a half inch cork on the top here, which works nicely as an end cap. I have pre-weighed everything. 30 grams of dextrose that's been dehydrated. You'll see when working with the stuff, it packs tight. You have to scrape it apart when you wanna use it when it's been clumped together. 56 grams of potassium nitrate. Four grams of sulfur. Five grams of iron oxide. All right, it's melted together nicely. It's pretty goopy. And I'm gonna start this process here. I finished filling this one, as you saw, and I scraped off the stuff that got stuck on the outside. So it needs a nozzle, but otherwise it's going to be set here. I had enough of the rocket fuel left to fill this crazy glue container. I've always wanted to try that and uh, made uh, both of the nozzles here and here out of um, epoxy and kitty litter, which I keep saying. But OK, the new uh, drill bit sizes for the smaller one, the crazy glue one and anything close to that size. I, I'm using a 764, which will not allow you to put cannon fuse in. So I've been pulling these fuses out of um, smoke bombs, and they fit real nice in there. Um, of course, you got to light the smoke bomb another way. And for this larger one, I'm using an eighth of an inch, not 1164. Attempting to launch the Dextro Space rocket fuel in a crazy glue container. That's not the direction I thought it might go. This is the tube we originally filled with the uh, super glue and uh, sodium bicarb to fix the hole. So it's come on a journey here, and I have a 1 8 inch uh, hole for a nozzle. I also put on a little streamer there because the stick was longer, but to get rid of some of the weight, that's what I did. Just a little bit too much weight, not enough force. So weighing out these components individually, uh, obviously separate from this, the housing is by far the heaviest piece here. And I think that's why all the plastic thin housed uh, rockets took off just fine. I think this is just too heavy duty and thick for a dextrose based rocket engine. It will probably work with some others, but not with dextrose. And now, and now, a message now, from our sponsor. Introducing Moron, a monthly subscription service where monthly subscription to Moron gives you black mold and insight into quagmire algorithms, strong reasoning skills for broken and odd objects, hands-on dismemberment, the ability to use everyday objects to prove you are a moron, key concepts in trying to open a bag, Intuition into core brain ramblings and flashcards are included. More flashcards are included. 
and even more flashcards are included. A bottle of slow-release cyanide. Try everything that Moron has to offer for the first 30 days for free. Just go to moron.org. That's moron.org. Put the link down in the description. For viewers of this video, Moron is offering a 20% off their annual premium subscription to the first to unsign their contract with Moron. And finally, I want to thank Moron for demonetizing this video, and I want to thank you for demonetizing Moron.